Hey everyone, welcome back. So a lot of the videos on this channel are pretty planned out. I plan out in advance what I'm going to talk about, when I'm going to talk about it. Other videos are just happening on a whim. And this is one of those that's happening on a whim. So the reason I'm making this video is that I've been looking back at the MCMC videos that we've had, and I realized that they've gotten pretty mathematical. So usually I like to have a guiding example through the video. And for the MCMC videos, I've noticed it's kind of just been, here's a function and here's what we're trying to do with it. And here's some steps and here's the intuition. But I want to give kind of a more simple approach to MCMC and doing something more kind of relatable with MCMC. So today we'll be using MCMC, specifically the popular Metropolis algorithm, to design a board game. So let me get right into it. Let's say you're trying to design a very simple board game. So although it's simple in this video, you can extend this to complicated board games like Monopoly, the game of life, if you want to design your own board game someday. But for our simple example, there's just four places that the player can be. And the player, as you've expected, is going to be able to move between the spaces, but we'll get there in a second. First of all, the four spaces, if they land on any of them, they get the dollar amount that you see. So gain 10, gain 15, lose 20, or lose five. And we want this board game to be fair. And by fair, we mean that as the player moves around the board, we want their expected earnings to be zero. And one way we can allocate the probabilities or more correctly set the probabilities at each state would be like this. So there's a 40% chance for any given step of this board game that the person is at the top left. There's a 10% chance there at the top right. There's a 20% chance at the bottom left and a 30% chance at the bottom right. So these probabilities add up to one, which is good. But more importantly, we see that the expected number of dollars is zero. You can confirm that pretty easily. For example, you can just multiply the probability times the dollar amount and add up all those things together and you'll see that they equal zero. So this was the easy part of the video, which is that we have the simple board game. We know what's the probability of being at each state in the long run. Now comes the tricky part. How do we now design the rules of the game? And by rules of the game, more specifically, I mean, how do we define the probability of going from any state to any other state? Because you can imagine that when you have this board game running, if someone's at a certain state, then you can design some kind of random mechanism that's going to tell them which place to go to next. And that random mechanism is exactly going to be the transition probabilities between states. So let's start thinking about it. We need to design some probability of going from the 15 to the 10. We also need some probability of going from the 10 back to the 15 and the 15 back to the negative 5. And it seems like it's a little bit messy. How are we going to simultaneously set all of these probabilities such that in the end of the day, we have these 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 long-term probabilities respecting the Metropolis algorithm? As I said in the beginning of the video, we can use the Metropolis algorithm to actually solve this problem without too much sweat. So. Let's start with the candidate distribution. As we said in the Metropolis algorithm video, which I'll link in the description below, we always start with some kind of candidate distribution. It can be anything you want. And the candidate distribution basically says that given you're at a certain state, what is the probability of proposing any of the other states that are in your space? And we're going to pick a very, very simple one. We're going to say that if you're at a given state, let's say you're at, for example, the plus $15 currently, then we're going to give a candidate of one third, one third, one third of going to any of the other states next. And same thing for all the other states. So if you're at a certain state, you're never going to be proposed that same state, but you'll have a one third chance of being proposed any of the other states. And now we just do what we did in the Metropolis video, which is now we need to calculate an acceptance probability. And an acceptance probability, again, just simply explained is that let's say that you were at state plus 10, the top left, and let's say that you got proposed state plus 15. What is the probability that you accept that proposal? So either you accept it with this probability, at which point you do move over there, or you do not accept it with that probability, and therefore you stay at the current state, which is plus 10. And the big result in that video was that this is going to be the minimum of 1 and the ratio of the long-term probabilities of those states. So the long-term probabilities of those states, the numerator here would be 0.1 and the denominator would be 0.4, so that we're taking the minimum of 1 and 1 fourth, which of course is equal to 1 fourth. So let's take stock of where we're at. So far we've defined a very simple candidate distribution, which is just 1 third, 1 third, 1 third for the states that you're not currently at. And we also have this acceptance probability. We've shown that we can pretty easily get this. We just divide the ratio of the probabilities and take the minimum of that with 1. And so to get the full transition probability, so the transition probability of moving from state plus $10 to plus $15, 
would simply be the multiplication of the candidate, the proposal probability, and the acceptance probability. Another way to say that in words is there's a one-third chance of being proposed to move to plus $15, and subsequently there's a one-fourth chance of accepting that proposal. Multiply those two things together, and you have that the transition probability of going from state 10 to state 15 should be 1 over 12. And that is one piece of our Markov chain, and we can fill in all the other ones really easily. Of course, if you have many more chains, you can just have a computer program do this for you. But with this small of an example, I just did it by hand and I filled in the probabilities. So let's look at this table for a second. This table, so the rows, the left-hand side, is where you're currently at. And the columns, the upper part, is the probability of going to that location next. So sources and targets. So for example, this one half at the top left says that if you're currently at plus 10, there's a one half transition probability of staying at plus 10. This zero over here says that if you're currently at plus 15, there is a 0% chance of staying at plus 15 on your next move. And all the other probabilities here can be interpreted similarly as transition probabilities. So you can even check for yourself, make sure that all the rows add up to one, which is what we need for a transition matrix. So this is exactly the transition matrix for your Markov chain or your board game that you're designing here. And this works. So I ran the simulation. Um, I just coded it up, not too difficult to do, coded it up according to these rules and let the person move around the board according to these transition probabilities for a million iterations. And we see that after we take all of these iterations, there's 40% chance. So on 40% of the moves, they were at the top left. At 10% of the states, they were at the top right. At 20% of the states, they were at the bottom left. And then on 30% of the states, they were at the bottom right. So we exactly matched the long-term probabilities that we wanted to match simply by using the Metropolis algorithm and designing this transition probabilities accordingly. And I have a couple of charts here showing the average earnings per round. So what you're looking at, again, I did a million simulations. So the x-axis has a million steps of a person just moving around the board according to these transition probabilities. And we see in the beginning it's rather volatile, but as you get more and more and more samples, we see that the average earnings per round approaches zero, which is exactly what we wanted. That was the whole goal. The goal was to design a fair board game such that you're not expected to gain or lose any money in the long run. So you can see it's not exactly centered at zero, but if you take even, even more samples, it's gonna go to zero in the long run. Here's a couple more. So this one's even closer to zero. Again, early volatility followed by smoothness in the later periods. And here's just one more, same exact thing. So my goal in this video was to show you that this MCMC stuff we're learning is not just for science, it's not just for hardcore statistics research. You can use this to do something as simple as designing a fair board game. Or if you wanna be kind of tricky, you can design this such that the person is always gonna lose money or owe you money or whatever you wanna do. Um, but just kind of trying to take this, this difficult sounding concept of MCMC and make it more relatable. So if you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe for more just like this, and I'll see you next time.